Just even in my life, I tried to just do everything the most efficient way possible. Because the key now is that you've got to that level, and that's awesome. Let's keep you here. In Counter-Strike, so many of the things are in the timing, right? Sometimes one second is way too much. Because I feel like some of my persona in Counter-Strike changed who I was as a person. Oh, what? That's jumping double for gold! Okay, so today I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and impressions on Riot Games' new tactical FPS, Valorant. Now, the first thing to say is that the game is extremely polished. Everything feels as though it has received a huge degree of thought and love. The agents are designed in a way that all feel really fun to play and all add utility to an attack or in a defensive situation. And because of the way that the game has been designed, it is utility that these agents are given that's different but the core mechanics behind them is the same. So every agent's able to buy the same guns because they all have you know, the ability to get you know, money in the same way, you know, like in Counter-Strike. And I suppose one way to think about it is, imagine if you had Counter-Strike and then you just, instead of having flashbangs and spokes, you just had a character that you could pick to play your match with that has a specific and unique types of utility that that person can purchase and then you have Valorant effectively. And so in that sense, they've designed it in kind of, I think what, in a way in which people will be familiar with Apex Legends. And they've looked at the abilities as utility, much like, you know, Counter-Strike with flashbangs and smokes and so on. It is supposed to give you a tactical option as opposed to, a, you know, a press to win button as maybe you would have in some other titles. So that in of itself is really cool because it allows for a lot of possibilities. It means that there's no player that's going to be playing on a team that is going to be really limited. If that player has really good mechanics, like great aim, great movement, great communication, all the rest of it, sure, they will have some more, more specific roles. But in Counter-Strike, you have pretty specific roles in many, many cases. Players must be dynamic but you're not really losing the dynamic nature of your playstyle through this. You just have some initial considerations that you'll have a particular part to play in a round when it comes to your utility usage. But beyond that, it's uh, you're pretty much running with the same as everybody else. So I think that's really cool. And if we're talking about the you know one of the more important gameplay mechanics and differences, we have to talk about the removal of peak as advantage. The way they, that they've done this is by having a better suited net code, you know, making sure that it's really consistent. Everything is very low latency. Uh, the hitboxes are extremely tight to the models. The player camera is placed in the center of the player's model as opposed to in one eye, like, you know, like we have in Counter-Strike where it's, we have our, the camera is in the right eye. Uh, and so that creates this peak as advantage. So that creates a situation that's more similar to 1.6 in terms of how you want to peak stuff, how you want to defend positions. This gives a defensive advantage. This also is, I think, really important because it's just intuitive. Uh, the CSGO mechanics are hidden and therefore, unless you know about them or have a reason to kind of really inv investigate upon like very, you know, playing very close attention to the game, which is just not really, it can't really be expected out of anyone that's not a professional you won't really be able to figure that out. But in Valorant, it's very intuitive, those ideas. And being a defender and holding an angle, you're going to have an advantage because of the way that this works. Now, the sound of the game is extremely clean as well. You can hear the footsteps. They're very loud. It's kind of like 1.6 as well. I, I think this game is more 1.6 than it is CSGO in many respects. And so, you know, that clarity that is offered up with the sound and the detail uh, that, that there, there is there is really good because there's very there's almost no ambient, if any. I don't, I don't think I heard any ambient noise. Any noises you really hear are to do with the you know the people running around or abilities. And the abilities, it's very easy to know what sounds mean what when you hear the sounds. So they've done a really good job with the sound design. And in terms of the competitive integrity, they've done so well in creating a clarity to sound that you, know, you can't confuse things. It's, it's pretty easy to know what's going on there. And I think that's important because ultimately with sound, it doesn't make sense to have sound be a skill ceiling. It, that doesn't make sense. Like it's, it's a, just a barrier to entry that's just unintuitive. And so I really am happy that they've made this decision. 
Equally with the visuals, the visuals in terms of competitive integrity are fantastic. Everything is extremely clear. There is no visibility issues. The way that the colors are done on the map makes it so that everything is very visible. You don't have issues with anything blending in. And in terms of looking at utility and so on with the smokes that are in the game, there is no such thing as a one-way smoke in this game. It is very consistent. Everything is consistent in that way. So if you die because someone's shooting you from behind a smoke, it's because they just got either lucky or they had a good guess because of the sound you made or something else. It's not because there's a one way. You'd never have to think about that. There's also no randomness. Well, let's say like we would have in Counter-Strike where there's randomness behind a Molotov spread. There's also no inconsistencies like in Counter-Strike where maybe your graphical settings will mean that you have an advantage or a disadvantage when you're looking over a Molotov or, or looking trying to look through a smoke or whatever it might be. So all of these things have really been taken care of by uh, the Valorant development team to make sure that there is as much competitive integrity as possible, that the skill ceiling is in the areas where it belongs and is not in areas where it doesn't belong. And I think that having like a skill ceiling to like a one-way one way smokes is I think just really ridiculous. Personally, I've always felt like that. I don't think it adds to the game because it's one of those things where if you die to it, then you yourself can like look at the demo and be like, oh, okay, this is the setup that he used. So now I now I know that, but had I not already known that, I wouldn't have been able to guess this because I see a smoke there and I can't see the guy's model. So it's just very, that's a very unintuitive thing. But now that I know about it and I'm a professional, I'm, I'm very unlikely to get caught by that again. So it's like a one trick pony type thing to get an advantage as opposed to using a skill and and and, advance, and this you know an argument can be made that oh well that person put a lot of effort in to trying to find that but at the same time i think this is like a very surface level argument and ultimately like we want skills like aim to to be something that's that's a, that's the thing that has a high skill ceiling and it persists in every single situation you can get edges with having better aim it's not like once around and once every so often your aim is going to win you around it's like it's something that's active all the time that you can always uh, be better at and and so on and so forth. There's depth to that skill, the skill ceiling of something like aim, and it can differentiate players, and that's important. So, in terms of the the kind of other quality of life things that have been added in, that have been grievances, I think for people from CS:GO, you have stuff as, such as you know you can see everybody's money even on the other team, which is interesting too because you can make the same argument that okay, well I could put loads of time into kind of figuring out the economy and kind of realizing what they spent and kind of eyeballing it based on how many people died and how much money they have to spend, I can kind of figure it out. But here you actually could just see how much money they have. And I actually do like that personally. I think that there are definitely better arguments against this than there are against one-way smokes in terms of the impact on the skill ceiling. And if you're a 1.6 purist where you couldn't see anything, any money, you couldn't see like how many people died each round, you have to like really pay attention to all of these things. Those people will probably have a lot of strong arguments against revealing more information. But I think in this game, it makes sense with how the game works. You can also see when the other team's ultimates are ready and the progress towards that so that you can understand what to expect. And I think that improves, or I think that reduces the variance. And I think that that's good because that means that the team that is better, smarter and, well, yeah, better and smarter, I think that they will win more consistently. I think generally speaking, speaking to the competitive integrity, we want the better team to win more consistently. We want there to be elements of the game whereby, you know, the better team might have a harder time every so often. Like, you know, I think Counter-Strike does this really well. And it does this because of a mixture of the weapons and the economy system. You know, if, if there's nothing that stops one player from hitting a bunch of one digs, and sometimes there's just nothing you can do about that. And it's going to change the tide of the match no matter how good you are. But arguably, you have a similar thing here whereby, you know, you do have a, a deagle. And it's uh, they have balanced it, though. The way the one deagles work is that if an opponent has bought full armor, they will have, you would have to do 150 damage to them to kill them. Now, if you're outside of 30 meters and you hit a deagle headshot in this game, the, the deagle is called the sheriff, then it will do 145 damage. So it won't be enough just to hit the, the one deagle if you're outside of 30 meters. Obviously, 30 meters is a, you know, a pretty decent distance, but I think they're trying to prevent that across the map pick situation from happening. And I think that's reasonable in some respects, but I don't want to get too much into, I don't want to get too into the weeds on the arguments behind that and how that might impact gameplay if it were different, as it's not different. And I want to cover as much as I can in this uh, in this podcast in a short period of time. Right. So 
Um, if you look at the the other quality of life, things that have been done when you're in the bi periods and, and kind of how the flow of the bi period works, unlike CS where you have this freeze time, um, you have this like 20 seconds, 20, 30 seconds at the beginning of a round where you get to run to the positions of the map. So there's barriers up on the map during the freeze time effectively where you get to run around and you get to buy in any of these places. So you can you know, move all the way to like the middle, of the, almost the middle of the map where the barrier is or whatever, wherever the barrier might be. And there's a point in which you can't go any further. And this is kind of cool as well because it creates consistency. This removes the idea from CS of having spawn timings where the spawns are random. And that's, you know, that's an added piece of variance into the game where let's say on Dust2, you could get loads of really good long spawns and that could give you a huge advantage against a team that's better than you um, because you've got more favorable spawns. The RNG is favoring you. So that's been removed by having something like this in the mix. Now, the other thing that's really cool is that not only do you have this time to really set your team up and to really talk about how you're going to attack the situation, you have this ability to kind of drop for your teammates. You can see all your teammates' money really easily. You can pull up the buy menu. I actually really like the way the buy menu has been done. The display of it's really cool. The interface is really nice. All the information is on the screen. If you hover over a weapon, it will tell you how much damage it does to the head, to the torso, to the legs. It tells you what the stats of the are on the alternate fire of that weapon, if there is an alternate fire on that particular weapon. And also if you want to, if you need a drop, you can right click a weapon to request it. And then all the your teammates have to do is press the buy menu. And then on the left side of the buy menu, it will show your teammates. And if someone has requested something, a button will appear. You can click that and you can, and then they will just instantly get that weapon into their hands, wherever they are during the buy period. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. A great quality of life addition to the game that I think really modernizes things nicely. So also in terms of, you know, chatting to your teammates, as I was mentioning, the audio codec that they've used in the game is incredibly good. Incredibly good. And speaking of other things that are very good in terms of that, we have 128 take, as you guys know, I think already that's been kind of talked about to enable as consistent an experience as possible. Well, they've also done to you know increase the consistency of your experience so that it's, it's always going to be as good as possible is if the if there's an opponent that has a dodgy internet connection on the other team and has stutters you will get that guy smoothed out on your screen so you won't see that person stuttering you'll see a smoothed out version of it so it's not going to be as annoying for you which i think is a really cool detail that they've added in in terms of the weapons that you can buy and the economy system, it's extremely similar to Counter-Strike and how it works in terms of loss bonus, in terms of winning bonus, in terms of the actual kinds of values we're looking at in terms of the credits as opposed to the money. And all the weapons are purposely put into the game. And this is an interesting idea also because all of the weapons are like CSGO weapons. The, the Deagle is there, as I said, the, as the Sheriff, the, the, the USP is there, it's called the Ghost. Um, you know, you've got, you've got like a stock pistol, which is like a Glock. It has a burst fire, which is actually pretty gnarly. Uh, I really enjoy using that. It's kind of like 1.6, actually, the burst fire. And again, like there's a lot of comparisons to 1.6 in terms of how this game works. As we already mentioned, with the lack of a peaker's advantage, with the increased defensive advantage uh, that exists, as well as some of the sound elements. But, you know, you have your AWP, you've got your Scout, you've got your SMGs that are familiar as well. You've got your AK, you've got your M4. And every single, you, oh, also you have the LMGs. And the LMGs are the things I know the least about. I, got to, I didn't get to test them out too much, but the AK is like a one shot at any distance, really good at, for tapping and, and slight bursts. You got the M4, which can one shot at close range, but otherwise at longer ranges, it's not a one shot. And, but it has better spray, slightly higher rate of fire. So pretty much everything has utility. It's really, really well done in that way. So the weapons will be very familiar for people that are from Counter-Strike. And the other thing that's going to be really familiar is, as I mentioned, there's a lot of, um, this, this game is basically just um, CS with a layer over the top, which is the abilities and the teleporters and the orbs and so on. So in terms of understanding good spacing on an attack or timings and rotations and understanding how to hold angles and how to communicate with your teammates and the ideas of, of how to gain advantage through taking map control and, and so on and peaking, like all these things are are going to be extremely familiar for, you, for all the people that are from CS. So you're going to have a very good experience. Where you'll have, you'll have a, a, a base level leg up on anybody else. Because these, these baseline mechanics, I think it's, if I was a guy that's like a CS player, or if I was a guy that is someone who's really used to games which have abilities, I would prefer to be the CS player because the abilities are easier to, to pick up on than 
having a good eye for, for you know spacing and, and a good eye for understanding the importance of map control or how to take positions or hold positions for each other or to make plays together as as you know players because that's at, at the core of it again it's, it's really like 1.6 so in terms of the the play period once you get past the buy period it's really interesting because this game does have a flow to it which is very different to cs in some respects although the action itself is going to be quite reminiscent of cs in terms of the actual gunplay which feels so so smooth we do have this amazing kind of flow where at the beginning of rounds, you tend to, it tends to be about kind of gathering information and kind of figuring out like how to take map control, like where the other players are playing. There's lots of ways to gather information, whether it be through some of the abilities like Server, who has those arrows that can kind of have that sonar pulse, which will give you the idea of as to where an enemy might be. And in, likely it's going to be the case that your arrows will get shot down before they see anybody, but you'll get a sound cue from a player as he has to shoot it. So that's some information. And there's ways also to kind of trick those those arrows as well, because they require line of sight upon the pulses to detect enemies. So you can purposely give your position away to deceive your opponent, or you can or you can kind of like that. I made a play once where I was lurking on the B side of the map. My team was attacking the A side of the map, and the B rotator shot an arrow into this into a position so he could rotate towards the A side on the flank. And I saw that he had thrown the arrow. And I saw that it had pulsed, but I was out of the line of sight, so it didn't detect me. So I peeked between the sonar pulses. And he, because he saw nothing on the first pulse, thought it was clear. And then he peeks into my shot. So, you know, there's, there's ways to use these abilities against your opponents, especially the ones that gather information. Because once they have the information as to where you are, you now have the information as well that they know where you are. So you get to play with that. So that's one thing to remember with these abilities. They very purposely have made it so that these abilities are all are possible to counter in some way or another. Um, and speaking of which, if we're talking about the ultimates and, and abilities that are more destructive, pretty much every single ability you can dodge. There is a warning that is coming, whether that be a sound cue, whether that be something that's visual, a visual cue. And you'll always have the ability to maybe to, to, to dodge that unless they put you in an impossible situation where maybe they've invested a lot into a position, they've thrown a Molotov in one corner and then ultimated the, the other bit and so you have nowhere to go or maybe it's you know a combination of abilities and so on but but these these things like don't feel like you're getting cheated on in a sense it doesn't feel like oh the guy just pressed a button and beat me you know, the other team will have to synergize and have to outplay you to really get these kills on you with these abilities so there is that um, when it comes to this these ideas of taking map control and you know using the utility the smokes and the, the, the things that block line aside to do so that's really fun to figure out because there's so many the ways that the abilities can can impact the map control in that way. There's so many different options that you get with your teammates to, to accomplish those things. It's really fun because you can try so many different approaches. And so it's kind of like CS in that way, but they've kind of bridged the gap a little bit for the layman. Because if you think about like pop flashing a position or knowing a smoke lineup in CS, it's actually kind of difficult to like actually kind of get all that knowledge and to then ex execute that knowledge at the beginner level. But in this game, you know, you can have a, you can consistently drop a smoke somewhere really easily if you want. And you can flash your teammate through that smoke really easily with the ability. Like it's much more intuitive than it is in CS, much easier. So you're going to be able to synergize with your, the people that you're working with from the get go. And this is again, a thing that it doesn't change the skill ceiling just because you haven't like, again, it's not trying to reward people for spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours learning pop flashes and smoke lineups. It's rewarding people for having the idea of where to play stuff and to have the timing, like understand the timing of what's going on in the map, to know that it's a good moment to do this play and then to be able to hit the shots afterwards. So in that sense, it's not taking anything away from the skill ceiling. It's just making it a little bit easier to access for people that are of a lower level or people who are not putting in thousands of hours immediately into the game. So that's, I think, a pretty big plus as well. Okay, so... What's the next thing? There's so many things in this game that are really cool. So speaking of the, I think I already spoke about the tick rate. So the tick rate is obviously a really important thing. You're going to have a really consistent experience with that. Really, really everything felt super smooth for me. It didn't matter like what my ping was. I think I played between 15 and 75. Everything felt really good. When we're talking about you know, communication though, that's going to be a really huge deal in this game. Knowing callouts, knowing how to synergize well with one another's abilities is going to be a very, 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 very important aspect to this game. Because although you can shoot your way out of a lot of situations, when you're playing as people who can like block your line of sight and can flash around corners and stuff, 
you're going to start to run into an issue where you're going to need to know how to use your abilities and synergize with your teammates to get into positions that can help you succeed. Um, the I think well, I don't really have any particular gripes with all of the smokes that can be down at any one time and just the things that can block line of sight. Sometimes it can really slow the pace of the game. But one thing I did find is that because of the mixture of lineups that you can have between the different agents, you can play much more aggressively or much more defensively when you're on the offensive side. You know, you can try to play really slow and play for the orbs, pick up the orbs, charge up your ultimates as much as possible before hitting a bomb site. You can play a really slow like map control game where you poke and prod, you make it a bit obscure as to where you're going, you kind of default out. Then you take like a really good chunk of map control, maybe in mid, kind of sit on it for a while, slow play it, try to fake your opponent, use the teleporters to go for a fake if you want. Or you could play a really fast style where you drop the smokes, you get the walls down, you try to go through their utility and you try to just, you know, use your, you know, far, a faster play style. These, all these play styles are possible. So in terms of the play periods, there's a huge degree of a variance with what you can do, which is, I think, very rewarding. And it's very clear that they've tried to reduce the RNG in this game and they've tried to increase the skill ceiling as much as possible while still keeping the game fun, which is something that I've always, always been extremely a huge advocate of. We've been in this period of time where lots of developers were, they were sacrificing skill ceiling to make a game more accessible and fun. And I was always, always of this argument that if you just know how to make the game fun, the skill ceiling can be still incredibly high. You just have to be smart in how you do stuff. And I think Riot have actually proved that with this game from my experience so far. Oh yeah, one thing that's really critical too that's, that is very 1.6-esque, and I don't think that I have mentioned yet, is the wall banging, the penetration on the objects and surfaces on the map. You can pretty much penetrate anything. The bullets will not persist through, like just, you know, permanently through the, the box. They won't keep their trajectory. They'll kind of, they'll just, they'll only go so far. So you can't like get a, a wall bang through a box that will then go another 30 meters and hit somebody else. So that's, it depends on the weapon as to how far it goes and how much damage it does through the box. But even a stock pistol can actually shoot through most objects. And it's really interesting because this means that if you're playing, you know, corner peaks with an AWP or something, you can get really pressured off because they can pretty effectively spam through the corner of walls. So that's something to bear in mind. There's obviously, obviously a lot of spots that you can spam to get kills. So that's, I think, pretty also. I think that's also pretty cool. I think that's going to be, you know, also be another thing that's, going to require a lot of map knowledge to use really effectively because you're going to have to know what spots people are playing in and you're going to have to you know, invest in, sp in spamming that spot at that particular moment. I think it should add to the game. I'm not, like, I know that is, it is a contentious thing for a lot of people, but I think it will actually add more to the game than it will take away. And I think it will create some very exciting moments when somebody's able to have that additional tool to pull off a clutch. And uh, I think that's a really huge, huge uh, aspect to this, especially given the fact that there's a defensive advantage I think that this helps to mitigate the defender's advantage because you're able to obviously shoot through certain positions uh, that they may be defending from. And I think that's, that's, that should be a good thing. In terms of the post-match experience, I think that you've got a really, really cool kind of grouping of statistics that immediately make you feel like you did well or maybe you didn't do as well as you normally would or gives you, it gives you a lot of feedback in terms of how you actually performed during the match, which is really compelling. And, you can, and it's going to have career statistics being tracked all throughout. So you're going to get a way better experience than you will compared with a CSGO matchmaking where all you really get is like a hidden MMR. <laughs> and you, so you don't know what your ranking is doing. You're, all you see is like this rank that doesn't seem to change most of the time. And, and you're not really able to engage with any of that. But, but in this game, you're going to get loads of stats to play with. That will be really, really cool. And right from the get-go too, you have custom lobbies where you can enable all of the cheats so that you can run around the maps, test out abilities, get used to them, uh, you know, practice smoke or lineups or whatever, because that's something that you can do. So a lot of abilities can be thrown. So you can throw some stuff from, you know, maybe over 25 to 50% of the map to, to kind of, you know, if you're going to go for a retake, you can have your retake smokes, uh, your lineups and stuff, which will be consistent that you can practice, all sorts of stuff that you can mess around with. And that's already in the game, which is amazing. In terms of the other like post-match stuff, like the experience when you're in the client, they've got incredibly good music. Music's banging. It's really such a great vibe to it. It's they've done a really good job with that. It's just an enjoyable experience just being having the game open. And in terms of just the I think I already covered the maps. 
I'm trying to think of what else I'm, I'm missing here. So I guess I can talk to some of the agents and their abilities and, and so on. So you guys can get an idea as to how, how things might play. So you've got more like tactical agents, like there is one called Viper. You can basically uh, put smokes up, also a wall that will deny line of sight, which they, were, they think they put a video up on their, on the Valorant YouTube recently of Viper. And this, this, this one is particularly tactical because you can put the walls and the smokes up and down it at your will. So you can make some really interesting plays because also the line, the kind of wall that she can put up is really long. So you can do it well outside of a bomb site to kind of cut a bomb site in half. And then she has a resource that does diminish slowly when it's up where, you know, boom, the wall goes up and the, the smoke goes up. And so it enables really cool plays because you can leave a wall up and you know when it's going up and going down, but the opponent doesn't. So it creates some really interesting tactical options that you can play with. Um, you know, when I was, I was playing quite a bit with Skadoodle and he was messing around a lot with Viper and we're doing stuff where, you know, he would have the wall up and then I would be playing Phoenix who has his pot flashes and then I would, he's, he's, he's kind of counting down to when he's going to drop the wall and so I time my flash with it and it allows me to throw a flash from position that's really unexpected and then we both get a chance to get, you know, get those kills if there are our opponents there. So there's some really interesting stuff around that. You have the more, as I mentioned, Phoenix, aggressive and selfish agents such as Phoenix where he has these pop flashes that go around corners. He has a wall that will heal him, but also damage opponents if they go through it, but it cuts off line of sight. So you can kind of, again, cut off some line of sight to make your way into, into a bomb site or a position. And he has this ability, his ultimate called run it back, where he kind of creates a clone of himself that can run around and frag people for a very short duration of time before either kind of it runs out or, and you get sent back to your initial location or he himself just well, that clone dies, and then it, obviously it gets reset. Uh, so that was like a lot of fun as well. So very offensive uh, character. You got someone called Jet, who's got all the movement options. Can dash, can levitate, can kind of float in the air. Has the daggers that have the quickest switch when you're dashing around. Because if when you're dashing, you you kind of pull your weapons away, you holster your guns, so you got to re-equip them. It takes a little bit of time. So the the, the, the plus of the daggers is that, and why you may want to use them is is because they come out very quickly when you're doing this, when you're dashing around, which gives you more offensive possibilities. And, and it's really a huge playmaking character because you can zoom around all over the place and, and hit some amazing shots. Because also the guns are in, inaccurate when you're in the air, but the daggers are not. And I think the shotguns are not as well, but the shotguns are in a useful close range. So when you're zooming around the air, if you really want to do some fragging, you get the daggers out. And you can get a, a one shot with a headshot, but otherwise I think it's 50, shot, uh, 50 damage per body shot. So it's you have to be really good, really good, really skilled to use that character, and you've got uh, you know other kind of tactical characters where like you've got a guy called Breach where a lot of his abilities go through different uh, ob uh, they go they go through different um, sorry they all go through walls basically so he can flash through walls he can kind of quake through walls like an aftershock where if someone's kind of gets affected by it they'll be bounced up into the air and they'll it's like being flashed in days you can't quite shoot your your rate of fire slow down a lot and and your, your movement speed slow down a lot. So it's like a, a flashbang that messes with your movement and everything. So getting caught by that's pretty bad. He also has his ultimate, which is a, a quake, which actually does throw people up into the air and does that effect over a much bigger area. So it's a, it's really strong, but you can grief with it because you can hit your teammates with that. So you gotta be really careful with, with it. And you can hit your teammates with basically all of the abilities. So these are some of the guys that I was experimenting with. There's a guy called Brimstone who can put down like three smokes around and he has a kind of orbital strike type thing where he, he can call down that does a lot of damage to a, a radius but again all these abilities can be dodged and uh and he also has like a, a thing that you can throw down on the ground that gives you a little bit of, of a faster fire rate so if you're playing defensively he's a really good option and so on so there's lots of like really interesting abilities in this game and ultimately if i kind of try to wrap up things now as i'll be obviously releasing a lot of content around this uh, this game is going to be really good. It's going to reward your skill. You're not going to feel like you're going to get randoms. You're going to play it and you're going to realize that all of your CS experiences will be very helpful. All the mechanics that you have in CS are directly applicable. You're going to have a lot of fun synergizing with your teammates and learning the characters that you feel fit your playstyle, whether it's slower and more tactical or faster and more explosive or somewhere in the middle. And you're going to be, I think, in a place where you're going to see like, wow, you know, this, this this company took all of the gripes of CSGO and took them seriously and fixed all of these, these grievances. And I have a much better kind of experience playing this game overall. Now, I'm not going to say whether or not anyone should ever you know, switch or whatever, but I think it's a really fun experience. And if you play CS, you're going to have a leg up over everybody else. So, so yeah, get on top of that.
get it in uh, <laughs> get it get involved hope you guys enjoy it i've definitely been enjoying it and i'll be continuing to play it and stream it so thanks for listening and i'll catch you on the next one